हेलो एवरीवन माय नेम इज प्राजक्ता ढगे एंड आई एम फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोलॉजी के टी कॉलेज नाशिक टुडे आई विल बी टेकिंग अ लेक्चर फॉर एमएससी पार्ट टू सेमेस्टर थ्री द सब्जेक्ट इज सॉफ्ट स्किल्स चैप्टर इज यूनिट वन टॉपिक इज माइक्रोस्कोपी एंड इट इज द फिफ्थ लेक्चर ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक सो टुडे वील बी स्टडिंग अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप्स वॉट आर इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप्स Electron microscope is an optical instrument which utilizes electrons as a source of illumination for observing objects at a greater magnification. Now, it can achieve a very high power of resolution because it uses electrons of much shorter wavelengths. Let's move or there are two types of electron microscopes. The first is transmission electron microscope and the other one is scanning electron microscope let's move on to the history of electron microscopes now many scientists worked on the advancements of the uh, electron microscope and finally led to the advent of it now it is a product of many inventions and discoveries that happened in physics now some of them we are going to see in uh, in the following lecture the cathode ray tube was first invented by brown in 1897 later electrons were discovered in the same year by thomson he showed a relationship of the electrons to the cathode ray tube it was de broglin in 1924 who showed that electrons behave in the same way as light and wave motion bosch in 1926 showed that electrons can be collimated in the form of an electron beam okay with the help of magnetic field which can function as a lens in 1932 first description of the electron microscope was published by nol and ruska ruska in 1934 developed an electron microscope which would magnify the objects up to 12000 times okay and later on in many improvements kept on occurring okay the many of the improvements continued till 1945 when the commercial models of electron microscope became available the experimentations for electron microscope began in late 1920s in germany and late 1930s in usa it led to the production of first practical model of electron microscope in 1940s by 1945 two famous companies uh, produced electron microscope commercially these companies were uh, siemens halske ag in from germany and radio corporation of america from usa so this was the history of electron microscope after this commercial um, coming of the electron microscope later on also there were many experimentations done many advancements done and today we have a very improved kind of electron microscopes now let's see the light microscopes and electron microscopes their similarities and differences so both the light and electron microscopes have the same purpose okay of producing magnified image of an object so both the microscopes are similar in arrangement and function of their components and consist of three major systems first the illumination system second lens system to provide magnification and third a means for observing the magnified image now the light microscope uses visible light while electron microscope uses electrons the position of the source of illumination is opposite it is situated at the bottom or in the light microscope while it is placed at the top in the electron microscope the lens system of 
for magnification consist of glass lenses in light microscope and electromagnetic coils in the electron microscopes the coils are used in the light microscope it can be observed at on a photographic film in the electron microscope the principle of fixation staining mounting and embedding are uh, although basically similar but yet differ widely in their procedures and requirement in both type of microscope okay now we'll move on to the properties of the electrons electrons are used as a source of illumination in electron microscopes they are negatively charged sub subatomic particles when the atoms of metal are excited by the sufficient energy in the form of heat the electron velocity is accelerated to a rate at which electrons leave their orbit fly off into the space and are lost to the atom the metal tungsten is commonly used as a source of electron the atom bound electrons when excited by a current of high voltage fly off from the surface of the metal in a continuous stream the continue the electrons uh, emitted from the electron gun are passed through a collimating aperture to form a well defined beam okay the electrons are readily absorbed and scattered by different forms of matter a beam of electron therefore can be produced and uh, sustained only in high vacuum electrons are like light waves uh, they are corpuscular and vibratory in nature and therefore are used for image formation okay now there are several ways in which uh, electrons behave when they interact with the atoms some of which i'm going to mention now uh, so first is the transmitted electrons it is the beam passes straight through the specimen onto the fluorescent screen or photographic plate some electrons of the beam lose a bit of their energy while passing through the specimen and get a bit deflected from their original axis of the beam such electrons are called as inelastically scattered electrons some electrons interact with atoms of the specimen and get elastically scattered without losing the energy these electrons deviate widely from their original path of the beam whereas some electrons get back scattered instead of getting transmitted through the specimen in some cases the electrons get absorbed by the atoms of the specimen and instead low energy electrons are emitted these electrons are termed as secondary electrons they are very useful for forming the image in the scanning electron microscope some electrons get dis some electrons dislodge electrons from the atomic shells of the atom in the specimen each empty space is filled by the electron from the outer shell the atoms then emit x rays of the characteristic wavelength and energy such rays can be detected using appropriate instruments and electrons are emitted when electric current is passed through the tungsten filament the wavelength of the electrons is based on the voltage of electric current okay so this was all about the electrons now let's move on to the construction of electron microscope which we will be studying under following heads the first one is electron gun second one is microscope column third is electromagnetic lenses or coils fourth is fluorescent screen fifth is transformer sixth is vacuum pumps and the last one is water cooling systems so electron gun and is located at the top of the microscope body that consist of hot tungsten filament okay 
and it is the source of electrons forming the beam the tungsten filament is a source of negatively biased shield with an aperture through which an electron beam is drawn off to a grounded and a positive anode next one is microscope column the microscope column consists of an evacuated metal plate it is housed at the top of the electron gun a number of electromagnetic lenses viewing screen and photographic plate these components are aligned one above the other the microscope column provides shielding to the operator from x rays that are generated when electron strikes the metal surface now electromagnetic lenses or coils electromagnetic coils correspond to the condenser objective and ocular lenses of the light microscope these coils are called condenser objective and projector coils each coil has a coils of electric wire wound on a hollow metal cylinder designed in such a way that an electric current passing through the magnetic coil produces an actually symmetrical magnetic field in the center of the lens now the magnetic field forces the electrons to spiral around the central axis the electron beam passes through the microscope column and gets deflected by a variable degree depending upon the current flowing through the coil of the lens the microscope is fitted with a variable resistance with a rotatory switch control it controls focusing and image formation in the electron microscope the magnetic field functions as a magnifying lens focusing is also done by adjusting the voltage of the current next one is the fluorescent screen as electrons are harmful to our eyes the magnified image is observed on a fluorescent screen the screen is coated with a chemical which by its excitation forms the image as on the television screen okay next one are the transformers the electron microscope requires high voltage current for the electron gun and the electromagnetic coils this is possible with the aid of high voltage transformers this requires elaborate arrangements and contribute to the massive size of the microscope so if you see electrons microscope are very huge in size vacuum pumps so we are moving on to the next part that is vacuum pumps the electron microscope requires vacuum inside the microscope column this is maintained with the help of a high vacuum pumping by diffusion pumps or ion pumps which require a lot of space a high vacuum is maintained by keeping every section of the microscope and every moving control sealed with the help of rubber or plastic rings between the adjoining metal surfaces okay next one is the cooling system or water cooling system the water cooling system is required to prevent overheating of the various parts of the pumps and coils coils modern electron microscopes have a circulating pump refrigeration plants and filter systems in the form of closed circuit included in the design of the microscope itself the size these days is kept reduced by the use of an electronic system to take care of the complex control circuits okay now this was all about the construction of electron microscope let's move on towards the working of electron microscope now the image that you see over here is of the electron microscope 
let's see the working it is based on the same plan as that of the light microscope the electrons are used for magnification and image formation since electrons have a much shorter wavelength they can be used for much better resolution image formation occurs by electron scattering electrons strike the atomic nuclei and get dispersed and the dispersed electrons form the image the electron image is converted into a visible form by projecting on a fluorescent screen electrons in the form of collimated beam pass through the condenser coil and fall on the object they get scattered and transmitted through the object and pass through the objective coil which magnifies the image of the object the projector coil further magnifies the image and projects it on the fluorescent screen or on the photographic film the image formation occurs when the energy of the electrons is transformed into visible light through excitation of chemical coatings of the screen those electrons which reach the fluorescent screen from the bright spots while the areas where the electrons do not reach forms the dark spots the areas which scatter el electrons are called are termed as electron dense whereas the varying degrees of intensity of electrons form the image with varying degrees of gray electron dispersion however is due to the atomic nuclei which consist of protons and neutrons the higher atomic number the greater the dispersion okay now let's move on so this was about the working of the electron microscope let's move on towards the applications of electron microscope and these are about the transmission electron microscope first one is shadow casting shadow casting is a special technique for increasing the contrast it involves keeping a metallic grid in an evacuated chamber a heavy metal like chromium palladium platinum or uranium is evaporated at an angle from a filament of incandescent tungsten as it gets deposited at angle it piles up on the side from which it is deposited while the other side remains clear of it when electron micrographs are prepared the sides with the deposition show dark areas while the other sides show brighter shadows this casting of shadow at a precise angle heightens the profile and general depth of the material under observation the image gives an impression as if the material is being viewed under a strong light one can get good outlines and profiles of viruses bacteriophages and macromolecules by using this particular method another method is negative staining method which involves treatment of the material with phosphotungstic acid it penetrates into the empty spaces of the cell that is between the macromolecules when the material is washed and studied under the electron microscope it shows light areas of the material while the filled areas with phosphotungstic acid or the phosphotungstic acid treated areas are shown darker the greatest advantage of this technique is that it helps us to determine the number of protein molecules in viruses next one is freeze fracturing freeze fracturing consists of freezing the tissue at about minus 130 degree celsius in a liquid freon the tissues are then transferred to an evacuated chamber at minus 100 degree celsius where a knife fixed at a microtome is used not for 
cutting but for fracturing or cracking the tissue the fracturing normally occurs at the plane of natural weakness after fracture the sample is left in vacuum for evaporation of water from the exposed surfaces this process is called as freeze etching at the cut surface a coating of mixed platinum and carbon is made at an angle so that a pile of this is made on the material according to its contours additional coating of carbon is made to give enough support to the carbon of the material cast the coating along with the tissue is removed from the chamber and floated on material like acids which dissolves the tissues what is left behind is the replica of the carbon platinum deposition on the tissue okay the replica can be trimmed and cut to a shape to study under the transmission electron microscope electrons can easily pass through the carbon but the platinum is electron dense and therefore appears black in the electron micrographs the micrographs produced by this technique give a three dimensional impact of the material and appear very different from that of the section material so this were the specialized applications of transmission electron microscope and this is all about the electron microscopes from my side in the next lecture we'll be talking about the scanning electron microscope it has not been covered in this particular topic will it will be covered in the next video so thank you from my side for now